This is part one of a two-part series with the goal of hopefully teaching you how to design and model furniture using SketchUp. To make a long story short, I'm a huge proponent of designing and modeling all of my projects. And I'm not saying that SketchUp's the only or best place to do that, but it's something that I use for every project. And I think that some of you might really benefit from it. So I just wanna get you up to speed as fast as possible. So the way that we're gonna do that is by modeling a project from start to finish over the course of these next two videos. And I don't know if that's the best way to learn, but that's just kind of the way that I learn. So that's how I'm gonna teach. So real quick, before we dive in, just a couple things I wanna get out of the way because they might save you some time. So who is this video for? And maybe more importantly, who isn't it for? So if you wanna learn about every feature in SketchUp so that you can become an expert, these videos probably aren't for you. But if you're a woodworker who wants to learn the 10% of the functionality that's gonna get you up to speed in designing within a day, then this video is for you. So I'm gonna keep it all very basic and just try to show you the things that I think are the most important. And then from there, if you wanna dive deeper or you're looking for information about specific things, honestly, just Google it because there's already a ton of information out there and courses being taught by people that are a lot better than me from a technical perspective. So with all that out of the way, Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so in this first part, we're not gonna be concerned about planning out actually building the project. And instead, we're really just gonna cover the beginning stages of modeling and kind of coming up with the aesthetic look of a piece and then playing around with a few iterations of the design. Then in part two, we're gonna start getting a little bit more granular with all of the components of the pieces and just troubleshooting problems and basically generating a finished project that we can follow for building the piece in real life. And to model everything, we're gonna be using SketchUp Make 2017, which is a free version. That said, any version that you have is gonna be fine and probably have all the functionality because we're keeping it very basic. So I'm gonna recommend watching this video through once and then watching it again and modeling along and to find the software, just Google something like SketchUp Make 2017 Download, and I'm sure you'll find it. Okay, so here we're in SketchUp, and I'm using a Mac, so just keep that in mind that for Windows, things might be a little bit different. Again, just Google it if your intuition doesn't work out. But anyway, it doesn't really matter what your screen looks like, but if you want yours to look just like mine, go to Preferences, Templates, and then choose Woodworking Inches. After you've done that, then go into View, Tool Palettes, and make sure that you have the large tool set selected so that all of these options appear. So at this point, you're good to go, but your screen might look like this or like this. And basically, SketchUp has a lot of different styles built in, and I really prefer to model in a style that I like the looks of and that's simple to digest. Just makes me the happiest. So again, if you want yours to look exactly like mine, go to Windows, and styles to bring up this window. Then I'll go into default styles and choose something like this and then click edit. And under the edge settings, copy these options. Then under the faces, copy these options. And finally under background, turn ground and sky off. And for the background color, choose white. Then so that all of that work is saved in this pull down menu, select in model and then click this button to create a style with all of your options. Now, in case you changed anything, you can just click on this and all the options will reset. Again, you don't need to do any of this, but that's what I like. Okay, so before we do anything, you need to learn the absolute most basic functions. So hold command and type one to put yourself into a top view or go to camera, standard views and select top. Okay, so by far the most common tools that you're gonna to use to draw are these three tools. The line tool, the rectangle tool, and the push pool tool. And you can select them by clicking them or by typing L, R, and P respectively. And to draw, for example, with a line, but this works for any tool, there are two ways to do it. You can click, hold, and drag, or you can click, drag, and click. And I highly recommend the click, drag, click method because as we start to build models and you're trying to draw a line from a really specific point to another, it's just a lot easier to click once and then navigate through your model and click again to create the line as opposed to having to hold the left mouse button the entire time. So just get in the habit early, I guess. 
Also, anytime you start drawing a line by accident and you want to get rid of it before you've committed to it, you can just hit the escape key to get rid of it. Okay, so we're in top view, and now I want you to click this button right here, which is called Zoom Extends, which will kind of center our axis, and we're going to talk more about that in a minute. But anyway, now select the line tool by either clicking this icon or by typing L. Then click once at the origin, and then start dragging to create a line. Now let's say that we want to create a line along the red axis that's 10 inches long. Well, when you get close to the axis, it should snap to it. So drag the line to the right, and once you see that it's snapping, take your hand off of the mouse and type in 10 and enter or return. And since the default units are inches right now, that's going to make a line that's 10 inches. Then, without clicking the mouse, start dragging down, which should drag the line on the green axis. Now type 10 and enter again, and there's another 10 inch line. Then again, without clicking, drag to the left and type 10, enter. And then finally drag back to your starting point and click the mouse once and you've completed a box. So you should see something like this. But real quick, if you don't, if you drew the first line and maybe you didn't see anything, you're probably just zoomed in too far to see it. So don't worry about that just yet, just keep following along and we're gonna fix it in a second. Okay, back in our model, regardless of if you can see anything or not, I want you to go ahead and hit Command A to select everything and then hit Delete. Because the faster way to build a box is with the rectangle tool, which you can click to select or just type R. And then with it selected, click once at the origin and drag down and to the right, take your hand off of your mouse and now type 10 comma 10 without any spaces. Then hit enter and it'll make a 10 inch by 10 inch square. And I know you probably are thinking it should be 10 space X space 10, 10 by 10, but it's 10 comma 10 for whatever reason. I still do that from time to time. Don't worry about it, you'll get used to it. Okay, now so that we can all get to the exact same place because our views might be different at the moment, click the zoom extends button. The shortcut is shift Z by the way. And what that's gonna do is make your model fill the screen. So basically your square should become really big when you click it. Okay, now let's talk about navigating the workspace. So there are three main functions, zoom, orbit, and pan, which can be controlled by these three buttons here. But if you only learn or use one shortcut, or well, I guess it'd be three shortcuts, it's these three. So if you're using a three button mouse, you'll zoom by scrolling the center wheel in and out. Then to orbit, you'll click on the center wheel and move your mouse around. And to pan, you'll hold shift while clicking the center wheel and moving your mouse. And by the way, if you wanna use the exact mouse that I'm using, I'll throw a link in the description. I've had this one for a few years now. It's not too expensive and it works perfect for this kind of stuff. Anyway, if you have a two button mouse, to zoom, you'll need to either click on the magnifying glass button or click Z on your keyboard and then drag in and out while holding the left mouse button. Then to orbit, you'll hold control plus command on your keyboard while holding the left mouse button. And to pan, you'll hold control plus command plus shift on your keyboard while holding the left mouse button. And I know that kind of sounds convoluted at first, but just watch me, here's the workflow. You're basically just resting your pointer and ring fingers on command and control, and then using your middle finger to add in shift when you need to pan, and release it when you don't. Okay, there's a good chance that you're messing around and kind of got lost in space at this point, so let's all get back to the same place by typing command plus one. That way we're looking from the top down at our model. And then click command seven, which will give you an isometric view, then click Zoom Extents or Shift X, that way we should all have the same view now. Okay, so you know how to draw a line, you know how to draw a rectangle, now let's make a cube, since after all it's supposed to be 3D modeling. So to do that, we're gonna select the Push Pool tool, or just type P on your keyboard. Now you should notice with the tool selected, as you hover over your square, the face gets these dots on it. That means if you click, you'll select that face. So let's click once, then start moving our mouse up, take your hand off the mouse, and then type 10 and enter. Now hit the Zoom Extends button once more, and you should see your cube. Okay, 
From here, I would say get comfortable playing around with what we just learned. And you can try drawing the cube again, practice zooming in and out on it, try orbiting around it, panning around, just kind of get comfortable navigating the environment. And it might feel a little bit weird at first, but it's like learning to walk. Once you get used to it, it's just second nature and you can quickly zoom around your objects. So go ahead and hit pause, do that, and then when you're ready to move on, unpause the video. Okay, we're ready to start modeling. So let's start by hitting Command-1 to go to the top view and then zoom out on your box so that it's kind of small, maybe about like this. Hit Command-A to select everything and delete. Awesome. So whenever I'm designing furniture, it's usually to fit a specific space or there's specific dimension requirements. So I always like to start with those, kind of model a box that represents that, and then model within those parameters. So in my model, the first thing that I'm gonna do is draw the overall dimensions. So from the origin, with my line tool selected, I'll click once, start dragging to the right, and type seven and the symbol for feet, which is an apostrophe, and hit enter. From there, I'm gonna drag down along the green axis and type 20 and hit enter for 20 inches. Then I'm gonna start dragging back to the left, and I could do this and type seven feet again, like we did last time, but instead I'm just gonna hold the shift button once my line has snapped to the red axis, and that's gonna sort of freeze it to that axis. And from there, I'll just hover my mouse over the origin point and click again, and that's gonna create a line the exact same length and parallel to my original line. Then finally, I can drag back up to my origin and click again to create my rectangle. Okay, now I'm gonna orbit a little bit so that I'm looking at my model in more of a 3D environment, and I'm gonna grab the push-pull tool, click on the face and start dragging up, and then type in 24 and enter. So at this point, we have a box that's seven feet long, 20 inches deep, and 24 inches high, and this represents the overall footprint of the media console that we're designing. Now, I know that I'm gonna wanna do some kind of base on it, so I'm just gonna take a guess and move the bottom up by six inches using the push-pull tool. So now at this point, we have a shape that represents the cabinet portion of our console. Okay, let's stop here for a second because this is a really big tip. Honestly, I think this is the biggest factor in determining success or failure when somebody first starts using SketchUp, and that is using components. So think of components as the individual parts of a piece of furniture. So using this table as an example, within a room I might have this whole table as a component so that I can move it around. Then within that, I might have the top and base as two separate components. And within the base, the legs and stretchers might be their own separate components and so on and so on. Now the reason that this is so powerful is because it makes it so much easier to model and iterate on a design. Whereas if you're not using components, the whole model's kind of just one big blob and it just makes it really difficult to use going forward. And there are other advantages too, which we'll start to show as we get a little bit deeper. All right, so components are super powerful and extremely helpful. And thankfully, they're also really easy to create and use. So here's how you make them. Looking at this cube, for example, first let's use the selection tool, which is the pointer icon here. And the shortcut for this one is another good one to know, just press the space bar. Anyway, with this selection tool, well, selected, if we click on a face or an edge of a piece, it'll select just that one thing. If we double click something, it will select that thing and everything that it touches. So for example, double clicking this face will select the face and the four perimeter edges. And finally, triple clicking will select everything that it's touching and everything that those things are touching. In other words, the entire cube. So we triple click pretty quickly. Click, click, click. Then click on this tool or hit G on the keyboard to create a component. Then just click create. And you can name the components if you're a super organized individual. And that probably becomes more important if you're working on a really gigantic model, maybe like for architecture or something. But for furniture, I've never made a model that's so big that it's that important. So I usually just kind of skip that. 
Okay, but anyway, jumping back into our model, let's go ahead and triple click to select the entire box and hit G to create a component. And just to be a good boy one time, I'll go ahead and name this one cabinet. All right, now to continue editing a component, you have to double click it. And you can't really tell here because there's nothing else in the model, but the rest of your model should kind of fade away a little bit when you do that. But anyway, if you don't open up the component by double clicking it, you'll just be modeling on it rather than within it. I guess you can think of it like power carving a piece of wood that was sitting on top of a tree stump versus power carving the actual tree stump. That's not a very good analogy, but whatever. Anyway, now we're gonna use a new tool, which is the offset tool. So what this does is makes a series of lines that are offset by a specific dimension from a perimeter that you choose. So in this example, with the offset tool selected, I'll click once on what would be the front of our console, start dragging, and so that the lines appear, I'll then type one and hit return to make an offset that's to the inside by one inch. And this is gonna represent the thickness of our top, bottom, and side panels eventually. Then I'm gonna get the push-pull tool, click on the inside portion of the box, and start dragging it towards the back of the cabinet. And since I know that the cabinet's 20 inches deep and I want a back panel that's three quarters of an inch thick, I'll just type in 19.25 and hit enter. Then to get out of the component so that I can stop editing it, I'll just get the selection tool and click on any blank space in my window. All right, so right now we've got a really long box and we're definitely gonna need some vertical partitions to keep things from sagging. So to model those, I'm gonna get my rectangle tool and draw a rectangle face that perfectly matches the inside face of my side panel. And by far the easiest way to do that is by clicking in one corner, then moving my mouse to the diagonally opposite corner and clicking again. Then I'll get the push-pull tool and I'm gonna drag it towards the outside and type 0.75 since I want it to be three quarters of an inch thick. And then I'll triple click it and hit G to make it a component. Now we're gonna use another new tool, which is the move tool, which we can get by clicking this icon here or by typing M on our keyboard. Now with a bunch of tools in SketchUp, you can use your arrow keys to lock them to the three different axes. Axie? Anyway, so here I'm just demonstrating that. And honestly, I can't recite which is which, so I'm not gonna teach you something that I don't even know but just click them and find the one that's right and it'll kind of become muscle memory even though you don't consciously know you're doing it. It's like, I don't know, making your heart beat or something. Okay, so back to what we were doing. Let's make sure that our vertical partition is selected and then click M. And you'll notice that when we have the move tool selected, as we click the option or alt key on a Mac, it toggles this plus symbol on and off. So if it's off and we move something, we'll just move that original component. And if it's on, when we're moving something, it will leave the original component where it was and then move a copy of that component. So with the partition selected and the move tool in duplicate mode, that's with the plus, I'm gonna click once on the bottom left corner of the component and then move the duplicated component all the way over to the opposite side of the cabinet so that the left side of the component is flush with the left side of the right panel. In other words, my panels aren't to the inside of the side panels, they're actually on the inside of them, like a ghost going through them. Anyway, then I'm gonna click again to release the object, and then without touching anything, I'm gonna type forward slash and three to divide the cabinet into three perfectly equal spaces. And you could type divide by two, divide by four, divide six, divide a million, well, probably not that. And it will make that many components in between the two that you have. You can also type times two or times three, et cetera, to create duplicates another that far apart. So if you dragged it 12 inches, the next one would be another 12 inches farther down the line. But anyway, we just want three and we've got them as soon as we delete the two that are intersecting our side panels. And you can see here that now we have three equal sized cubbies in our box. Okay, next I wanna add some drawers to the leftmost cubby. 
So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle that completely fills that cubby. Then I'll get the push pull tool and push it into the background direction and type 0.75 for the thickness and then go ahead and make it a component. Then I'm gonna double click it so that I can edit it and then get my line tool and hover roughly over the center until I see it snap to the center and then draw a line directly across my piece by holding shift as soon as I'm snapped to the red axis. And then I'm gonna get my push pull tool and push it in by 0.75 and that'll make it disappear. Next, I'm gonna get the move tool and grab our drawer face right here at the top left corner and hit alt so that we're duplicating the piece. And then we'll copy a duplicate underneath the original so that we have two equal sized drawer faces filling our cubby. Now, another thing that makes components so useful is that, as you can see here, if we double click it and start editing one of the drawer faces, anything we do to that one component will happen to all the duplicates of that component. Okay, so I'm gonna undo all of that by hitting Command Z to undo a few times. And I'm also gonna show you that if you ever wanna make something that's a component not be a component anymore, I can right click it and choose Explode. And then if I alter the original, this one isn't gonna change anymore. But there's actually a better way to do this. So let's undo a couple times to get back of them both to being one single component. And then instead, I'm gonna right click and choose Make Unique. And that's gonna leave it as a component still, but it will be a unique component. And so editing it won't cause the other component to change. All that said, we actually do want these two to be duplicate components for now. So let's undo again a few times to get back to where we were. Okay, so things are looking pretty good. And next I wanna add some sliding doors that'll overlap each other. But we've got a problem right now because in order to make them slide, we need to recess this vertical partition by a little bit which we'll do right after we thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So I've been using Squarespace for about four years now, and honestly, it's been great. Prior to that, I used to code everything on my own, which is fine if you like doing that, but it's hard and takes time, and honestly, the outcome wasn't as nice as the templates that I use now with Squarespace. And the worst part was, it was taking me away from doing the things that I really should be focusing on, like getting better at SketchUp. Now, in addition to Squarespace making it super easy to build and maintain your site, buy domains and all that stuff, they also have plenty of e-commerce, which has been really helpful since we started selling plans. Things like inventory management, a simple and secure checkout process, and unlimited products allow us to easily manage our online transactions. So if you're thinking about starting a website, or even if you have one already that you think could be better, you owe it to yourself to at least check out Squarespace and see if it might be a better option for you. Just head over to squarespace.com slash four eyes for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code four eyes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, thanks Squarespace. Now let's get back to recessing that vertical partition. So I'm gonna right click it and make it a unique component. And I'm not sure how recessed I want it just yet. So I'm gonna use the push pull tool to recess it by just one and a half inches for now. Next, I'm gonna grab the line tool and let it snap onto this corner here. Then I'm gonna start drawing a line along the red axis and I'm gonna hold shift as I do that so that it's frozen to that axis. And I'm gonna sort of hover my mouse on this face of this panel here, which will make the line exactly long enough to come equal with this plane. Then I'll click once and start dragging up along the blue line, again, holding shift to freeze it to that line. And then I'll hover my mouse over this corner so that I know that the line is coming up exactly to the underside of the top, and then I'll click again and work my way back to complete the rectangle. Then I'm gonna use the push pull tool to make this panel a half of an inch thick and make it into a component. Okay, now I'm gonna zoom into this panel and use the move tool to inset it by a half of an inch. Then I'm gonna duplicate it and recess that panel by another three quarters of an inch so that it's a quarter of an inch gap between the two. And I can see now that my partition isn't recessed enough, so I'm gonna double click it to edit it, and then use the push pull tool to recess it a little bit more. And I can see here that it needs to be at least a quarter of an inch more, but we'll just go ahead and do a half of an inch. 
Then finally, I'm gonna grab the move tool again and drag the back panel along the red axis until its left side snaps equal to the inside of the right side of the panel of the carcass. So at this point, our cabinet's looking pretty good. So I guess maybe the next thing that we should do is add some drawer pulls. And I'm not sure what I want, but let's start off with a simple half circle on the top edge. So I'm gonna double click so that I'm editing the drawer face component and then grab the circle tool. And then I'm gonna hover on the top edge until that I see it snapping to the midpoint. And then I'll click and start dragging out and then I'll type in a dimension. And I'm not sure how big I want this, so I'll just experiment by typing 0.5 and hitting enter. I can hit two and enter. You can keep hitting numbers and enter to try different sizes. And I think that 0.75 is gonna be pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hide my carcass just so that we can get a better view. So to do that, I'll just right click on the component and then select hide. Now if I double click my component again, I can get the eraser tool and delete the half of the circle that's extending beyond my drawer face. Then I can use the push pull tool to recess the other half of the circle until it's equal with the back side of the drawer face and that'll make it delete. Okay, I like the look of this handle for now, so let's go ahead and do the exact same thing on our two sliding door panels. All right, now to unhide my carcass, unfortunately it's gonna be off screen, but I'm gonna go up to the toolbar and choose edit, unhide, all. All right, so I think we're done with the cabinet for now. And actually, if I use the move tool, I can kind of see how the sliding doors are gonna function. But anyways, let's start working on the base for now. So I'm gonna start with a really simple leg. So I'll just use the line tool and snap it to the bottom right runt corner of the carcass and then draw down along the blue axis and use the origin as the reference point so that my foot's coming down to what would be the ground plane. Then I'll click and drag to the right along the red axis and type 1.5 so that it's one and a half inches wide. And then I'll draw back up and then to the left to complete the rectangle. Then I'm gonna use the push pull tool to make this piece an inch and a half thick and then make it a component. Next, I'm gonna get the move tool and duplicate this leg across to the right side of the cabinet. And now let's actually pause for a second to learn a little bit more about the select tool. So at this point, we know that we can get it by pressing the space bar and you can select edges, faces, components, and so forth. And to select multiple things, you can hold shift and keep clicking to add things to your selection. But sometimes the faster way to do that is by dragging a selection box over the objects to select them. And you can do this by dragging right to make a box or dragging left to make a box, but they do different things. Basically, if you drag to the right, it will only select things that you've completely captured in the box. So for example here, I've just selected the left leg, the two drawer faces, and the leftmost vertical partition because those were the only things that completely captured in my box. Now, if you make a box by dragging to the left, you'll select everything that your box touches. So for example, here I've selected the left leg and the entire carcass because my box just barely kissed both of those objects. So it doesn't make a huge difference at this point, but later on it could. So I just wanted to make sure that I took a second to explain that. But anyway, for now, I wanna select my two legs and the easiest way to do that is by dragging a selection box from right to left that just touches my legs and nothing else. So with those selected, we can get the move tool and duplicate both of those at the same time to make two more legs on the back side of our cabinet. Okay, next I wanna make an apron. So I'm gonna use my rectangle tool to start drawing on this face. And after I've started dragging in the direction that I want it to go, I'm gonna type 1.5 comma 1.5 to make an inch and a half by an inch and a half square. Then I can use the push pull tool to extrude that all the way over to my other leg and make it a component. Okay, now I wanna make a duplicate on the back side 
And your tuition is usually going to be to hover your move tool on the object itself, but you don't have to, and it's often easier to use other objects or faces as reference points. So for example, here I already have my stretcher selected, but I'm actually going to hover the move tool over the front outside bottom of my leg. Then when I duplicate it and start moving my copy, I'll just move my cursor to that same corner on the back leg and I know that that'll move the copy of the stretcher to the exact direction and exact position that I want it. And I know that might sound weird for now, but the more used you get to using SketchUp and using reference points, the quicker and more intuitive it'll become. Now I'm going to use my rectangle tool to make a square from this point to this one and do the same thing for my other two stretchers. So we'll extrude it to the proper length, make it a component, and then duplicate it over to the other side. The only difference here is that we're gonna type divided by two to create a center stretcher as well. All right, so at this point, we've got a decent little media console going here, but there really isn't any detail yet, so let's just make it a little bit more interesting. So we'll start by getting our tape measure tool and we'll measure down from the top of the base and type 0.25 to make a guideline that's a quarter of an inch from the top. Now we'll double click to edit the component and using the line tool, we'll make a line across our guideline. Then we'll use the eraser tool to get rid of the guideline. But since we made the guide when we were not editing our component, we have to click in empty space with the select tool to get out of editing the component and then we can erase it with the eraser tool. And finally, we'll edit the component again, and using the push-pull tool, we'll recess the top by a quarter of an inch. Now I wanna do the same thing on the side face of my leg. So I'll just continue that line across the face, and again, recess it by a quarter of an inch. And that's gonna leave this extra little line here, which we can simply erase. Okay. Now I wanna make the same detail go around the entire perimeter of our base. So I'll start editing the front apron and using the line tool, I'll click and then go all the way across the stretcher or the apron and click again. And here you can see that we have a problem. All of our legs have that same corner recess detail on them. But for this leg, for example, the detail is on the inside of the leg rather than the outside, but there's an easy fix. But before we get to that, let's recess the cut in the top for our stretcher. And actually I messed up here and accidentally erased the entire top quarter inch of my apron, but I'll fix that later. All that you would need to do though is just recess it by a quarter of an inch. Okay, so back to the leg. To fix that, all we need to do is select it and then right click and choose flip along and the components red. And what that's gonna do is mirror the piece along the red axis. Okay, so for the back leg on the same side, we're gonna need to do the exact same thing, flipping the component along the red axis. And then finally, we'll select both of the legs in the back and again, right click, and this time choose flip along and green direction to flip both pieces along the green axis at the same time. All right, next I was gonna flip the back apron along the green axis to fix it, and I did but that's when I realized that I had accidentally erased the whole top portion. So here I'm just hiding the carcass to get a better look at what's going on. And finally I noticed it. So I just used the line tool and the push pull tool to get it back to where I wanted it and where you should be right now. Okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to my two side aprons. So I'll just draw a line and recess the top by a quarter of an inch and then go over to the apron on the other side and flip it along the red axis and then I'll unhide everything again. Okay, so at this point things are looking good, but I wanna show you one more thing before we end this, and this won't really be a tutorial so much as just kind of illustrating another really powerful feature of working with components, and that is iterating. So I'm speeding up the video a lot here, but the basic idea is, let's say that I'm not sold on this drawer pool style, and I wanna try something else. I can just copy my entire model and make the doors unique components and model in a new handle style. And then I can compare my model side by side to see what I like better. And I could also do this with bases and honestly really anything. 
And this is a super powerful design tool when I'm nailing down a design. I often have dozens of variations of a piece that I'll make to just help me get it exactly where I want it. All that said, we're gonna leave this one here and I'll be back with the second part of this tutorial really soon. Or if you're watching this and it's already later, I'll go ahead and put a link to that video in the description or in the screen here. All right, so I hope you like this video. Subscribe to check out some others. And if you really like it, take a look at my Patreon page, find out how you can support the show, get a t-shirt and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.